Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to go through a practice problem which is all about perfect or first degree price discrimination through charging price equal to willingness to pay. Now the question that I'm going to go through is just here. A firm faces a demand curve described by the equation. Q subscript D is equal to 100 minus P over 2. And here QD is equal to the quantity demanded and P is equal to the price. The marginal cost of production is constant and equal to 20 and there are no fixed cost of production. So we're asked if the firm engages in first degree price discrimination through charging price equal to willingness to pay, what would be our market outcomes? Find producer surplus, that's PS, consumer surplus, that's CS, and any deadweight loss, that's DWL. So I have another video which goes through all the theory around first degree price discrimination. I'll link to that video in the description below. I'm also going to do other videos where I work with this same situation, uh, but go through two part tariff and bundling. So I'll link to those in the description just in case you're interested. In terms of our question here though, actually the first thing I'm going to do in order to set everything up is I'm just going to go ahead and draw the demand curve that's described in this question. So I'm going to first just put two axes down. We have price on the vertical axes and quantity on the horizontal. From my demand equation, I can see that when price is equal to zero, quantity demanded is equal to 100 minus zero on two, so just 100. And that will be my quantity axis intercept. I'm going to mark that point on our diagram here. Now, if quantity is equal to zero, I get zero is equal to 100 minus P on two. I'm going to solve for price here. So I'm first going to add P on two to both sides. So I get P on two is equal to 100. I can then just multiply both sides by two and I get P is equal to 200. So that will be our price axis intercept and I'll mark it on our diagram here. Right, so we're then going to just join these two points together and that's our demand curve. Now our demand will also track the marginal benefit of consumption, that's MB and willingness to pay, that's WTP as well. So I'll put those labels in. Let's also, while we're here, put in our marginal cost curve. In our question, we can see it's just constant, so it will be a flat line at the level of 20. And here, MC is marginal cost. Now, when a firm perfectly price discriminates, they're going to exhaust all of the possible trades. So they're going to produce right up here where demand or marginal benefit is equal to marginal cost. Now to find this quantity associated with this intersection, we will need that quantity. We're going to set demand equal to marginal cost, but I'm first going to work with our demand equation and make price the subject. So at the moment it's QD is equal to some stuff. I need P is equal to some stuff. And that's just because our marginal cost is measured on the vertical axis. So I need my vertical axis variable of our demand equation. So that's price isolated on the left hand side before I set them equal to one another. So to do that, I'm just taking my demand equation and I'll take 100 away from both sides. So I get QD minus 100 is equal to negative P on two. Then I can multiply both sides by negative two and I get P is equal to negative times two QD plus 200. And just rearranging so it's nice and neat, I get P is equal to 200 minus two times QD. And so now we can set demand to describe in this way. So this is our, actually our inverse demand equation. We can set that equal to marginal cost. So I get 200 minus two times QD is equal to 20. Just solving for the quantity then, I'm going to start by taking 200 away from both sides. So I get negative two QD is equal to negative 180. Divide both sides by negative two and I get QD is equal to 90. So I'm just going to mark that on our diagram here. That Q is equal to 90 will be Q star. That will be how much our firm will produce. So our firm output when they perfectly price discriminate. And just looking at the question here, we're asked to find our market outcomes. So our task is really to describe output, the prices and firm profit. So we already have found output, that's 90. In terms of prices, well, if we set price equal to willingness to pay, 
then the price for each unit sold will just be equal to the highest willingness to pay for that unit, which is tracked by our demand curve. So the price for each unit will be equal to the height of the demand curve at each point. So our prices essentially follow the line of our demand curve all the way up to Q is equal to 90. And in my diagram, I've just indicated that as, as a red line. In terms of profit, our profit pie will be equal to the difference between total revenue, which is TR, and total cost, which is TC. Now, our total revenue will be equal to the sum of all of the prices that we sell each unit for, all the way up to Q is equal to 90. Now, that will actually be equal to the area below our demand, since demand tracks the price for each unit, just up to Q is equal to 90, and I've shaded that area in green here. In order to find the value of that area, I can actually just divide it into two shapes, a rectangle and a triangle. The area of the rectangle will just be equal to base times height. So 90 will be our base and the height is 20. So this is all equal to 1,800. The area of the triangle is equal to half times base times height. The base is 90 and the height is going to be well, the price axis intercept, that's 200 minus the level of the bottom of the triangle, so 20. So 200 minus 20 is 180. Now, 90 times 180 is equal to 16,200. So we can multiply that by a half and we get the value of that area as being equal to 8,100. So our total revenue is the sum of 1,800, that's our rectangle area, plus 8,100, that was the area of the triangle, so 9,900. Now, in terms of our costs, since we're told that there are no fixed costs in the production of this good, our total cost can be found by summing up the marginal cost for each unit produced. And this amounts to taking the area under marginal cost all the way up to Q is equal to 90, which I've shaded here in purple. We actually found the value of this area before, it's just that rectangle area, base times height, so 90 times 20, so 1,800. To find profit then, we're just going to take the difference between our total revenue, which was 9,900, and total cost, which is 1,800, and, and the difference there is 8,100. That's our profit. Visually, we can see it as the difference between the green area and the purple area. Uh, and the firm profit, I'll color in orange, um, that's that triangle area there. So that's our output prices and profit. In terms of our welfare, so consumer surplus, producer surplus, deadweight loss, there is no deadweight loss since we're producing right up to where marginal benefit is equal to marginal cost. We're exhausting all possible trades. There will also be no consumer surplus in this market. Consumer surplus will be equal to the sum of willingness to pay minus price for each unit traded, but price is equal to willingness to pay for every unit traded here. So there is never any difference between price and willingness to pay. So there's no consumer surplus. Producer surplus will be equal to the sum of price minus marginal cost for each unit traded. So that's the difference here between our demand that tracks the price and marginal cost all the way up to Q is equal to 90. So that's the area I've shaded in pink. That's that triangle area that's producer surplus. We already know the value of the area of that triangle. That's the area that we found before. It's half times 90 times 180, so equal to 8,100. Now you will note that producer surplus in this case is equal to profit. That's no accident. When we have no fixed costs, producer surplus is equal to profit. It's also the case I should note that in, in this market, producer surplus is the only surplus in the market. So producer surplus is equal to total surplus. All right, that's perfect price discrimination as charging price equal to willingness to pay. In other videos, I'll work with the same situation and do two-part tariff and bundling. If you've seen the corresponding video on the theory, you'll know that we get exactly the same outcomes. Um, it's just the firm just getting to those outcomes a different way. I hope that this video helped. If it did, please like and subscribe. Keep happy and safe, everyone.